This is Ray Bouchard, and you're listening to the You Need to Know program. I have as my guest today uh, David Arthur, and he's with the I Belong Amen Ministries, and uh, he has written a book called Refined. David, tell us something about how you got started, where you're from, and all this stuff. Well, I am originally, I was born in New Jersey. I was raised in Philadelphia, and I was not brought up in a Christian home. Uh, <clears throat> I think best two facts to start with are that one was my father was he had committed suicide just before I was born and so I grew up without a dad and two is that I was molested more than once by more than one person pretty much what I like to call recruited Mm -hmm. so I was recruited into this way of life actually way to death Mm -hmm. um, what I call death style from a very young age I started engaging in homosexuality and the only time I ever talked to God as a child was to ask him why he put me in the wrong body or if he would let me be a girl when I woke up the next morning. Um, because I noticed the more feminine I acted, the more attention I received. So by the age of 14, I had already overdosed on pills. I had already had numerous sexual partners. And by the age of 14, I was a runaway I was on female hormones, I was dressing like a female, and I was involved in prostitution. And most importantly, at the age of 14, I was HIV positive. I pretty much lived a life of sin, just just destruction. Drugs, alcohol, sexual promiscuity, and so on, and, and a life of crime. Mm-hmm. I was in and out of county jails and in prison twice. And it was actually my second time in prison as I was living as a woman for many years at that point. And my second time in prison, a correctional officer said to me, hey, come here. He says, do you know that God did not create for you or intend you to be this way? And of course, I was very prideful and arrogant. And I said, of course he did. Look at me. And he said, no, he didn't. He says, and since I can tell you this, I'm going to tell you every day because there's nothing you can do about it. And he did. He told me every day. But it didn't take long for me to start seeking him out on the compound. I started looking for him. I forget his name, but we called him Bishop. And I wanted to talk to Bishop because for the first time in my life, there was a man that stood before me Mm -hmm. that I knew without any shadow of any doubt that he truly and purely loved me. And he didn't want to use me, abuse me. He didn't want to profit off me, kick me while I was down, hurt me, nothing. He just wanted to love me and for me to know the truth. Mm. And I can tell you that I was so offended at the truth. But it was the truth and it was me being offended that actually set me free from all of the bondage that I was in. Okay, so what was the uh, what was the thing that made the help you make the transition from where you were to uh, to what you experienced later on in life? Well, when I got out of prison, I I didn't you know I didn't become a Christian in prison and I didn't get saved in prison. But when I got out of prison, I returned t- like a dog to my vomit and went mm-hmm. back to my yeah. old ways. And the only difference at that point was that I no longer felt comfortable dressing as a woman. I no longer wanted to be a woman. And so I like to think that that was God beginning to work in and through me. And so in uh, 2008, I was diagnosed with osteoporosis from all of the hormones and just really all the trauma and drugs and alcohol that I put my body through. I I couldn't stand up straight and I couldn't walk without a walker. Mm. And by 2009, I was diagnosed with full-blown AIDS, infections in my brain, in my blood. I had boils popping out all over my body from the infection trying to get out. And my immune system was gone. Mm. And my viral load was through the roof. And so they sent me home to die. And they basically told us to make arrangements because I wouldn't survive. So they put the hospital bed and everything right in place in my home they put hospice in place and Mm -hmm. and i did i got into that bed and i waited to die i knew two things when i laid in that bed i knew i was afraid to die 
and I knew I didn't want to go to hell <laughs> because there was something in me that always knew that if I was to die at that moment, I would go to hell. And I didn't want to go to hell. And so I picked up the word. I picked up God's word, and he led me to the very first verse that he led me to. It was Romans 1 and 27. And it told me that men burning in lust for one another, giving up the natural use of the woman. And that verse spoke multitudes to me. Sure. That verse told me that not only was I living sinfully, but I was living unnaturally in direct and deliberate opposition to God's will of his you know, intended creation mm -hmm. for me. I didn't want to be in opposition to God. And so it was at that time that I really just started diving into his word and, and praying and repenting and asking Jesus to take the reins, mm. asking him, just please, just take the reins of my life, just take this all away and, and, and give me freedom. And I started witnessing to people. I mean, I can honestly say that most people just thought I was a little Looney Tunes because I was dying. And a lot of people didn't want to hear what I had to say, but I told them, don't ever accept what you've accepted with me mm. as if it's okay. Don't condone it. My life has been a complete and total and utter lie. It was that truth that I needed. Mm -hmm. And it was that truth that led me to freedom. I woke up. I remember waking up one morning. It was September of 2009. And I woke up and I was in so much pain. I was in pain from the inside out. Mm. And the narcotics that I was on, heavily medicated. They didn't even touch the physical pain. But I can tell you what, I knew joy and I knew peace. Mm. And for the first time in my life, I knew what rest meant. And I had it. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling out to the Lord and I said, Lord, I am ready. I am ready to go. I know now that I am not afraid to die and I know that I'm not going to hell. Mm -hmm. And I begged him. I says, Lord, I am ready. Please take me home. I don't want to live like this. I can't live like this. Mm -hmm. Please take me home. I said, but Lord, please just allow that through my death, you can be glorified. And it was from that moment on that I started improving and, and just healing and getting better. And within three months, I was up, standing up straight, walking around, no walker, and my HIV was undetectable. Mm -hmm. And my immune system was back full force. I had uh, diabetes. I had chronic depression. I had I've been diagnosed with bipolar, anxiety, PTSD. When I came out of that darkness, when God reached down and Jesus Christ yanked me up out of the cesspools of this world, mm. I left all that behind. And I just, I remember going to the doctor when I moved to Maine. I remember going to a doctor and she said to me, David, there's been a big misunderstanding, a huge mistake. And I said, what's that? I thought she was going to tell me that I, that I wasn't undetectable. <laughs> and she said, you could have never possibly had osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. I said, but I did. My bone density was almost gone. She said, no, David. She's like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with your bone density. She said, as a matter of fact, it's better than it should be for a man your age. And I just looked at her and I said, well, that's God. And she said, no, 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 it's just all, these tests have been mixed up. These have to be somebody else's tests. And I said, all of them? Because there were so many. Sure. And she said, oh, yeah, all of them. And so, of course, I found a new doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, it was that freedom to let me know that I was saved and he rescued me in 2009. But he constantly and consistently does this. Mm -hmm. on an almost daily basis for me. Sure. You know, the freedom that I've received, it, it's not just for the lost. It's not just for those who are trapped in that darkness of the LGBT movement. It is for the saint, 
for the Christian as well because they need to have that hope and be encouraged that they can start praying for their daughter or their their grandchild that they stopped praying for because they gave up on them believing or thinking that that was just who they are. Mm -hmm. And, And so that is the freedom that comes with Jesus Christ. And it is only through Jesus Christ. Because if you're not set free by the Son, you know, you can go through a step program or to any ministry you want, but nothing can set you free but Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what does it, isn't it? So what happened to you when you tried to get into various churches, etc.? How did they respond to that? You know, that was a very confusing time for me. And I think if I hadn't been on my deathbed and hadn't truly accepted that my life was over, Mm -hmm. I think that I may have ended up going back to that darkness because I was told, well, you can come here, but don't talk about it. Mm. We don't have to talk about that. Or I was told, well, I don't want to offend anyone else. And so my my reply is, I was offended. Mm. If I hadn't been offended, if my bishop hadn't offended me with the truth, I would not only be physically dead, but spiritually as well. Yeah. You know, and so God loved me and he loved me first. Mm-hmm. And that is the reason I'm able to love others enough to tell them the truth, enough to offend them with the truth, because the truth is offensive to those who don't live in it. I understand you do some kind of, kind of street ministry. I do outreach ministry, and I love to do street evangelism. I don't have, you know, like a typical way. I like to just walk up to strangers, show them my picture, my before and after picture, and say, hey, that's me. And they'll say, "Uh, I know that's you, but who is she? And I said, that's me. Mm -hmm. And so it's that response, and it's that wow factor that I love to shock people with, and then I get to tell them of God's grace and his mercy and how he just rescued me from that darkness. Amen. And so that gives them some kind of hope to move from wherever they are to where they can be, right? They do. Absolutely. I've had many, I've had men and women come to me and say, wow. And and they've come to me in tears and they say, thank you. You have given me hope for my grandchild, Mm -hmm. for my brother, my sibling. You know, you have given me hope to know that there is freedom Mm-hmm. from being LGBT. And that freedom has to do with Jesus Christ. And is only can do with Jesus Christ. They're, the freedom is only available in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, you can play religion and try to help out somebody from the outside in, but if it doesn't come from the heart, nothing changes, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, now you have a ministry called uh, I Belong Amen. Uh, I Belong Amen Ministry. Yes. What is that? What is, tell us about that. Well, I do, you know, outreach. I love to give testimony. I think right now that my biggest opposition is the church itself, mm-hmm. where they don't want to offend. Um, and because I guess they're looking for another way around it. And I just have to let them know that there's no way around it. Only the truth, right. only the convicting, piercing truth in love can set somebody free. And yeah. that's what we need. If I hadn't received it, I wouldn't be here. You know, and and so I believe I was set free for a time such as this Mm -hmm. because so much going on in the world right now where this message needs to be told. Yeah, people need to hear the truth about the fact that God loves them unconditionally and it's not based upon some of the uh, addictions that they have been addicted to, like in homosexuality and so forth. Is they're just another form of addiction. Absolutely. So we need to change that addiction from uh, that to having a relationship with Jesus Christ right. because that sets us free, right? I think one of the biggest encouragements that I've seen just within ministry alone is when I get to speak with someone who is lost and being in the LGBT movement mm-hmm. and they say, well, how am I going to change into being heterosexual? You don't have to become heterosexual you are already heterosexual we are created and intended heterosexual Mm -hmm. you know anything outside of that is a direct and deliberate attack against god's intended creation so anything outside of that is sin amen and just like any other addiction whether it be drugs pedophilia lying gambling homosexuality it can be overcome that's right so tell us about, you know, you've written a book. 
Tell us about that book. I have. I'm very excited. Um, this is a book that's been seven years in the making, or should I say seven years in the putting it off. Um, mm-hmm. But God has really moved in the last few months, and he made it possible to be done and completed. And it is called Refined, mm-hmm. Life Through Homosexuality, Transgenderism, and Beyond. The only, absolute only purpose of this book is to offer hope and encouragement that there is freedom, total freedom from being LGBT. And that's not to say that with that freedom, there's no struggle Mm -hmm. because I struggle, but I don't struggle with the struggle because I'm content, I'm secure, and I'm safe in the finished and total work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So now you have a phone number people can reach you or account or someone? I do. You can look us up on Facebook. I belong Amen Ministries based in Hancock, Maine. It's P.O. Box 176, Hancock, Maine, 04640. The phone number is 207-669-8267. Well, you got to go through that again. I didn't catch all that. Okay. It's P.O. Box 176, Hancock, Maine, 04640. And the phone number is 207-669-8267. And my email is David Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R, at IBelongAmen.com. And that's also our website, www.IBelongAmen.com. Do you have some uh, final words you want to share with the audience before we leave here today? Remember, you're talking to both Christian and non-Christian groups. so that Yes. You know, I would love to say to to the parents and the grandparents and the family members who don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, who don't want to tell them the truth because it might offend them. The love that you're showing them is not agape love because we have to love everybody enough to tell them the truth, to save them. And so what's happening is people are loving their loved ones. Mm Mm-hmm directly to hell, literally. Wow. And for those who are lost and, and seeking, I know what you're seeking. I know the love and the affirmation that you're looking for in people, in places, where you're looking for it, in the alley, in that bottle, in the drugs, in the back seat of a car, in a seedy motel room, in cash, in, in clothes, wherever you're searching for it. Please let me tell you that you will not find it outside of Jesus Christ. The only place that that peace and that joy and that love is found is in Jesus Christ. And it is it is not only attainable, but it is retainable. And it is something that he has his already. You are already forgiven. Mm-hmm. He died for your forgiveness. You are already forgiven. All you have to do is accept that forgiveness And all you have to do is look at homosexuality or transgenderism like any other addiction. And once you see it as an addiction, it's so much easier to put it down and walk away. Mm. uh, Sometimes our need for acceptance and to be included is so strong that we'll go through any any cause. You know, we have kids that if they can't get attention by being nice, they get attention by being bad. And sometimes that's counterproductive. So uh, the number again to call is 207-669-8267. Okay, you've been listening to the You Need to Know program, and my guest has been David Arthur, and he's a part of the I Belong Amen ministry, and he has a book called out called A Refined, and uh, if you have the opportunity, you can call him at the number 207-669-8267. And you'd like to have him call you, right? Absolutely. I am. I, I, I wait for somebody to reach out to me. Okay, if somebody wants to reach out to him, he, he's more than willing to help you to, as he was helped himself to get into the love relationship with Jesus Christ and not, be, not go beyond those, those problems. And so, David, thank you for being here again, and we look forward to being with you again some other time in the future. Thanks for having me, Ray. Yeah, God bless. God bless.